The grey wolf is the largest extant species of Canidae. They have an imposing presence. Highly intelligent and social, they work together to bring down their prey using stealth and stamina during their hunts. They stand 85 centimeters, 33 inches at the shoulder, and weigh an average of 40 kilograms, 88 pounds. They have been intertwined with folklore for centuries, and while most people in the past feared them, some societies respected them. However, they were driven to extinction in many parts of the world, largely in an attempt to protect livestock and people from continual attacks. Today, grey wolves are widespread across Eurasia and the North American continent, but this range is about a third of its historical range. Here we ask the question, why are there no wolves in the United Kingdom? Wolves thrived in the UK after the last ice age, around 10,000 to 12,000 years ago. They crossed the land bridge connecting the UK to the rest of Europe. They followed the migrating herds of deer, elk, boar, and other grazing animals, and proliferated throughout the British Isles. They quickly became established far and wide and became the apex predator, living alongside the likes of brown bears and lynxes. As the Ice Age came to an end and the ice melted, raising the sea levels, the land bridge was submerged, effectively isolating the United Kingdom from the rest of Europe. The animals that had made it to Britain were now trapped on the island. They dominated the landscape, but with only a relatively small area to call home, there was nowhere to run to if their species felt the pressures of human settlements and changing climates. Unlike other species, the grey wolves didn't seem to succumb to the phenomenon of island dwarfism, and instead were thought to be as large as the arctic wolves of today. They survived by hunting plentiful species of mammals such as deer, cow-like aurochs, bison, and saga antelope. But with the species being so successful and their numbers growing, they soon caused problems for the British people. There was conflict and lots of it. Wolves were once so numerous in the UK that shepherds found it impossible to protect their livestock. To control their numbers and protect people's livelihoods, wolf hunting was introduced between January and March each year from around AD 950. This was during cubbing season and therefore provided the best fur as well as reducing greater numbers by targeting the mothers and indirectly their defenseless young. The wolves were particularly vulnerable during this time of year and hundreds were killed each year, but the persecution continued. During Norman times, between 1066 and 1154, servants were instructed to hunt wolves on their master's land. They were specifically employed as wolf hunters. There were no restrictions on hunting wolves at that time, although more often traps were used instead of actual hunting techniques. Some common people were awarded land if they promised to rid it of wolves. This was a condition they had to abide by as landowners. Others were ordered to destroy woodland, either by coppicing it or burning it to the ground to drive out the predators. In 1281, Edward I ordered the extermination of all wolves in England. The relentless killing of these once dominant species was taking its toll on their populations, but they were continually seen as a threat. Even as their numbers began dwindling, they were hunted. They were such a menace to travelers that special houses called spittles were erected along the main highways for people to seek safety from wolves if they came across them. In Scotland, the predators so frequently dug up graves that people began burying their dead on the Scottish island of Handa. The wolves had adapted so well to the British climate and countryside that they were being seen as pests. They were drawn to human settlements by the promise of easy food. Despite the nuisance of these animals, there is evidence that people tried to domesticate them, using them for protection and to help during hunts. However, it seems that wolves were not tolerated by people, and despite efforts to tame them and make use of their abundance, they were, instead, driven to extinction. Wolves don't exist in the United Kingdom nowadays. It is thought that the last wolf was hunted in 1680 in England and Wales. The exact timing of their extinction has been debated, however, as some say that it was earlier than the 1600s. Either way, they seem to have survived longer in Scotland. Some reports of wolf sightings in Scotland occurred as late as 1888, even though less than 15% of Britain was now covered in woodland. They were able to survive longer than the lynx, 
bear, and wolverine. As their habitat was destroyed, they adapted from hunting in the forest to the open moors of Scotland, where they could feed on red deer. Just like in the modern era, the wolves became wary of humans after the centuries of persecution they suffered at their hands. They sought refuge in Scotland for a short time, but even this population couldn't avoid the relentless hunters forever. The expansion of farming habitats was at odds with the wolf's existence, and in the end, it was a combination of deforestation and active hunting that led to their demise. Even to this day, they are still persecuted, often illegally in parts of mainland Europe. But could this iconic species, Britain's last top predator, now make a comeback? It is a conversation that has cropped up several times. There are arguments both for and against the reintroduction of wolves. Conservationists in the UK have reintroduced the beaver to its waterways, mostly successfully, and other endangered animals like the water vole have made a comeback thanks to such conservation efforts. But reintroducing a top predator is a whole other ballgame. Although wolves have been successfully reintroduced to other places across the globe, perhaps most notably in Yellowstone National Park in 1995, the attitudes of the British towards them may prove challenging for any introduction into the UK. They are viewed in a negative light, bloodthirsty, dangerous animals that prey on livestock and pose a threat to people. The negative views of wolves are deeply ingrained in the British people. Researchers have long recognized that attitudes towards animals are one of, if not the most important factors to consider in any reintroduction efforts. Not only that, but the grey wolves have been absent from the landscape for so long that they may have serious effects on the established ecosystem. They could decimate wild deer populations, which could have a knock-on effect on the vegetation and deer habitats, something that would be felt throughout the food web. What's worse, in today's Britain, where wild landscapes are far fewer than they were a thousand years ago, free-roaming wolves would likely come into contact with people again. Once they learned that livestock were easy targets, there was no guarantee that history would repeat itself and they would start preying on livestock once again. This would certainly be met with the same intolerance as it was hundreds of years ago. If they were reintroduced, their population would have to be controlled, either through coals or through physically fencing them off from roaming completely free. But the people of Britain are unlikely to be ready for the introduction of such a species. With no dangerous animals in the UK these days, people would have to be educated about walking in wolf country and the safety precautions they would need to take. There is a project called Bearwood, which was founded in 2019. A small patch of ancient UK woodland the size of six soccer pitches has been sealed off. In it, four European brown bears, five wolves, two Eurasian lynx, and two wolverines have been released. Although this isn't the reintroduction of these locally extinct species, it offers visitors the chance to see what Wild Britain would have looked like a thousand years ago. It is a brief and small look into the past and perhaps highlights the incredible wildlife that the British Isles once had. For the UK, it seems that the grey wolf's time has been and gone. Introducing a predator to an area, regardless of whether it was once native or not, is a complex issue. So many other species need to be considered, the habitats need to work, and the conservation efforts need to be ongoing. For the remaining grey wolves across the globe, their species isn't threatened for now. But with a constantly growing human population and changing climate, who knows what lies around the corner for them? That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time.